All right, so the Finance Committee put together a little PowerPoint uh, when we were working on the different things. Just as a highlight, this is just a draft. Please, it's just a draft. Well, we thought it might be a good thing to put on our website, on our Facebook page, well, maybe not Facebook page, but have it accessible on, on explaining to the public what we're looking to do. And, and we start off on the presentation uh, uh, with some accomplishments. Uh, so, for example, uh, some of the accomplishments we've done is that uh, we had the PennDOT Greenlight uh, Go Grant to 218000 uh, by converting all the street lights to LED. We've saved over 38000 and obviously the task force uh, with PennDOT is making a lot of progress on, on the Chartier Street and, and Bridge. Um, some other uh, ones, obviously, uh, in the, uh, the good news that we've uh, done with the uh, uh, the great save that uh, Ray and, uh, and uh, Matt uh, did with the police and the fire department for, uh, um, for that save with the car that exploded. Um, in addition to some of the other accomplishments, the Byer Hill Road paving project, uh, sanitary uh, sewer repairs and lining. Uh, of course, we did the Task 1 Baldwin Street, uh, that group did that. Uh, the MS4 water compliance is still going going and where he's going to buy some more Tylenol uh, stock. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, and then obviously we did some of our payment pro uh, improvement projects as well as we created a new borough website and Facebook page uh, this last uh, year. Um, and last but not least some of the other accomplishments, minor ones, uh, we had a very successful day in the avenue. You can see uh, Mike Tolmer's picture up there in the in the dump tank, um, and uh, we uh, had a scout approach us uh, to consider renaming the alley um, Eagle Way, uh, which was kind of a neat thing for all the scouts that are on, uh, what is that, Chestnut and Greg uh, that have been there. Um, and the public safety, uh, Bridgeville Police has been a, a very big leader and has gotten a lot of positive press on using uh, social media to influence the, uh, uh, the community in solving crimes. Uh, they've had over 3,500 calls in, uh, through October, and uh, also at Community Day, they gave away 143 bike helmets that they uh, were received. What was that, a grant or something, more? Um, and then the fire department had 428 hours of training, uh, as well as responded to 160 calls through October. Um, the large expenses that we had in 2017, uh, we had the, the Byro paving project, of course, uh, the maintenance program, the MS4 work, uh, the sanitary sewer lining, uh, the liability coverages, uh, the health insurance, and then obviously the money that we have to uh, put in the capital improvement account uh, for the upcoming projects that we've committed uh, money. So, I mean, we're talking over um, almost $1.7 million in expenses that we went through this year uh, on different things. Um, as far as plans for 2018 that we have been uh, told, uh, we gave a laundry list to the Finance uh, Committee and uh, we want to restore some of this building. Uh, it's starting to get old. I uh, want to do some of those things. Uh, the Adaptive Street Lightning Grant is uh, coming very soon. Uh, additional MS4 compliance work needs to be done. Uh, the police have uh, uh, requested uh, us to consider a police car. Uh, there's some updated equipment that the public works needs. Uh, we're looking at security cameras based on the little things that have gone on in the last couple of years in the community parks and from what we've heard from the public works continues to go on. Uh, then they task to uh, Baldwin Street Corridor Project the Chartier's Park Comprehensive Plan um, in the collective bargaining agreement, uh, wages are going to be increased. Uh, the uh, final project uh, for the McLaughlin grant that we've uh, gone through, uh, the Chartier's Expansion Project, Washington Avenue uh, Bridge Widening Project, and uh, additional sanitary sewer line, the install of backflow preventers on Baldwin Street and pavement maintenance project. Uh, I need to take a deep breath right now for all the things that we uh, have plans for. So what does that mean for all those things that we've added? And I'm sure there's plenty more that we have. Um, in addition, you know, 
put some numbers to those, and, and I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but we're looking at another 1.6 million uh, in, in different expenses that are going to be involved again uh, that we have. Uh, so, so we got we have a lot of things as we anticipate it coming again this coming year. Um, as you can see, in two, just as a snapshot of 2014 through 17. Really, money uh, as far as revenues, they really haven't changed much. Uh, we have a little bit of a, uh, a number difference in 2016 and 17 with that plus six percent, and, and then 17 we're anticipating the getting to the budget where it's going to be negative six percent. So there's kind of a wash out there, uh, but we really haven't increased revenues uh, um, in quite a number of years, uh, and so that is one of the concerns because of these other expenses coming up. Because as you can see from the last three years, four years, uh, the expenses continue to come up. Now, on the budget for 2017, we do not have what in there, Lori, yet. The, the capital improvement money. The capital improvement transfer. So once we do the capital improvement transfer for 17, this number is going to be, it's not going to be that negative 14. It's going to be a higher number as well. But that wasn't an expense. We didn't want to show that on here. Um, but you're, you're talking that there's going to be some significant expense increases as well as, heck, last year at the same time we sat here saying that one of these days it's going to come up and we're going to have to look at, at, at the different things. So what does that tell us? In 2017, if we did nothing, we're estimating that the taxes that we bring in minus the expenses, we're going to have a deficiency. So we're going to have almost $150,000 deficiency and that does not help build our our funds for the monies that we need for those projects to come up uh, and the emergency ones especially. So uh, what we're uh, the finance committee has bring to the uh, to the council is to consider raising the building millage. Well, first of all, splitting the millage between the building and the land. So you're having two separate taxes instead of one just on the full value of the property, tax on the land, and then tax on the building. <clears throat> um, the, if we do this by increasing the millage uh, one mill on the building and four and a half mills on the land, this will increase the revenue of approximately or excuse me, $365,000. That's an estimate. We've been running numbers and doing all kinds of things, but that's, that's a pretty pretty comfortable number of where we think will help us. So increase it to one mil or? No, increase it okay. a mil. Okay. Uh, so what does that mean to a property owner? If just using a, a property owner that has a $100,000 value house, uh, in 2017 they pay $550 in taxes. Okay, That would increase by changing how we we're handling the millage uh, rates uh, that would increase their taxes up to $759.20 or $209. Okay. Uh, one of the things that we'd like to look to do is um, give a discount to the residents that live in Bridgeville. So if you have the Homestead Exemption Act or the Homestead Exemption with Allegheny County, with the county, we're going to honor that as well. And so therefore, we're going to give you a $12,000 Homestead Exemption if you own your property and you live in that property, so our residents of Bridgeville, uh, which then equates to uh, a deduction of another $78 on your taxes. So therefore, your, the increase of your taxes is, is going to be about $130 on a $100,000 house. Um, just in a summary, uh, with the upcoming uh, capital projects, and approximately $800,000 is needed to, to complete those. Uh, our cash reserves need to be uh, prepared for these expected expenditures ex as well as the unexpected ones. Uh, at the end of 2017, we're going to be at the lowest that we have been in our reserves of 700000 in years. And we already uh, said that it's been a significant amount of time that we've been this low. Uh, many projects need to be undertaken uh, that require match funding. For us to be able to get grants, and to be able to fund some of these different things, we need to have some matching funds in those. So the bottom line is, uh, that, uh, is basically is that we need to increase uh, the bottom line to, to move forward with the new projects, especially for the next few years. 
Uh, so we're looking to, to increase taxes this year um, is a nutshell and, and, and pretty much uh, trying to uh, do what's right for the borough um, by making sure we're financially sound. Any questions from what I, I had in the slide? Is there some talk also of considering something for the fire department um, introducing a tax to help them out? It's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. Okay. Okay. What I'd like to do is just email this to everybody. Uh, if you have any comments or things that you would like to see changed, um, I'm out, up for anything. I mean, I think that we need to have something out in the public so they're they're aware of why we're doing it as well as some of the information just to have good communication. It's really well done. Um, yeah, if I could just add, you know, uh, Committee met, but but Joe and Lori have put a lot of work into this, and I think it tells the story. It tells our story, and yeah, we may we may be coming to the table uh, for everyone to contribute a little more this year. But there's some reasons why, and I think visually when you see it, yep. you understand. So very well done. Yeah, very well. Everything everybody's come to us about is they want us to do this and want us to do that, and. At least this gives us some flexibility to move forward with that and uh, take on some projects that we've been trying not to get into too deep because we didn't have the money at the time. So, so very good, Joe. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Joe. Can I ask you a question? I'm just curious. What's the benefit of switching light from the land to the buildings and whatnot? Well, one of the one of the things that that uh, we have a lot of land in Bridgeville Borough that is not um, being developed. Um, this hopefully will encourage maybe some of that land to be developed to get a return on the land as well. So then therefore it could help us as well as help the owner um, be able to generate some more tax revenue for the borough too. So that, that was one of the focuses, was we have some land that's not really doing anything for us other than being land. So if you could develop that more, then we'd have an assessment of that property, which then could be a more revenue for the borough, but as well as more, uh, you know, make it a residential, make it a commercial property. It'll to bring in more economics into the borough. You know how many communities in Allegheny County do this? I don't think we're that many, but... Uh... To, to split it? Yeah. Um, it's kind of been an interesting conversation. There hasn't been that many. Yeah, not in Allegheny County, but and, and I, the memo that I distributed earlier in the year, I, I attached uh, uh, some charts on it. It's actually more prevalent in Al East for some reason. I'm not sure why, but it's certainly authorized under the, the borough code as long as the combination doesn't exceed the maximum commitments. Yeah, the bottom line, we need the revenue. It's just a matter of how you get it, I guess. So. Okay, thank you.